On January 3, 1962, NASA publicly announced the Gemini program, formally changing the name of Phase 2 of the Mercury program. Gemini means twins in Latin, and the name signified that the new spacecraft would hold two astronauts compared to Mercury's single astronaut. The internal layout of Gemini was that of a cockpit because the astronauts who were former test pilots had input on the layout and were more comfortable with it. As an escape system, the Gemini pod also had ejection seats as a fighter jet would. The Gemini capsule would be launched on a converted Titan II ballistic missile and its goal was to rehearse all the tasks that would be necessary during Project Apollo's landing on the moon. The Gemini astronauts included three Mercury veterans, Gus Grissom, Gordo Cooper, and Wally Shira, but most of the astronauts were new to the space program and would get their first taste of space. Gemini 3, the first crewed mission, launched Grissom and John Young, who would launch to space on Gemini 10 as well, before going to the moon on two Apollo missions and command the space shuttle on its first mission. After the initial test, Gemini 4 featured the first EVA for the United States, the first time an American astronaut, Ed White, would exit the vehicle in space. In Gemini 9, A, 10, and 11, further EVAs were conducted to practice various practical tasks, but these proved to be awkward and taxing for astronauts until in Gemini 12, Buzz Aldrin demonstrated an improved technique in a record five and a half hour spacewalk. Gemini 5 was the first test of the fuel cells, which would be essential for the long Apollo trip since no solar panels were planned for the Apollo spacecraft. Gemini 7 was the two-week mission to test duration, and while Frank Borman and Jim Lovell did not enjoy such a long stay in the pod, it didn't discourage them from sharing a future mission. They were both part of the first crew to enter lunar orbit on Apollo 8. Another major goal of the Gemini program was rendezvous and docking, First two Gemini pods met up with each other in space, Gemini 6A and 7. Then Gemini met up with its uncrewed partner, the Gina Target vehicle launched by an Atlas rocket in Gemini 8. That docking almost resulted in tragedy because of a malfunctioning thruster, but the crew of Gemini 8 managed to disengage from the Agena, and Neil Armstrong worked around the problem, saving himself and David Scott. The Gemini 8 experience no doubt contributed to Armstrong being selected to be the first to set foot on the moon. Gemini 9A couldn't dock with its Agena because the fairing around the Agena's docking port had failed to fully separate, but docking was successful on Gemini 10, 11, and 12. On Gemini 11, the crew docked and undocked four times, and used the Agena engine to boost themselves to a record high apoapsis for a crewed mission at the time, 1,369 kilometers. They also used a 36 meter tether tied between the Gemini and Agena so that the Agena could be used as a counterweight for artificial gravity. This didn't work as intended. They had trouble keeping the tether taut, but they did generate 0.015% of Earth's gravity, the only time such a rotational system has been used to generate artificial gravity in space intentionally. Gemini 8 managed to generate much more through their uncontrolled rotation unintentionally. The Gemini program was a remarkable success despite a few setbacks and gave NASA the confidence to continue on to the Apollo program. All of the EVA rendezvous docking and duration requirements had to be met before Apollo, and they were. Thank you for watching Today in Space History for January 3rd.